it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and today I'm going to show you how I built this. I'm not 100% sure what to call it yet, so I won't call it anything, but I'll show you how it came together in this video. So if you're ready to get building, let's go. My parents and I are about to tackle their master bathroom remodel. So before we dove into that, I went ahead and built their vanities so that they'd be ready to install after we tile the floor. But this design isn't specifically a vanity per se. It would make an excellent dresser or console as well. Either way, my entire design was based off of a little trim detail that I had seen recently on a piece of furniture online. Basically, I decided that I was putting this trim around the front and I just built the plans backwards from there. So I'm sharing the plans over on the blog at the link below, but keep watching to see how this piece came together. I was building two identical vanities. I purchased about 60 board foot of white oak from my local hardwood place in varying widths and lengths. So the first thing that I did was pick through my pile and measure each piece and label it for what I would use it for to keep things semi-organized. The legs and frame for these vanities would be basically made from two by twos. So since I was working with one by material, I trimmed down some boards to the length of the legs and the frame pieces and I ripped them about one and a half inches wide and glued them together. I don't have enough clamps, but really, whoever has enough clamps. So I glued several of the pieces together at the same time. I just had to make sure that I was very careful not to glue them all together. So while the glue dried on the frame pieces, I started making the side panels. I trimmed boards to the length that I wanted the side panels of the vanity, and then I cut them to the width that I needed on the table saw. Once they were cut down to the right sizes, I just edge glued up a pair of side panels. The hardest part of this build really was trying to make the most of the lumber that I had. Since these boards were all varying widths and lengths, I had to think through the most efficient way to cut them and trim them to create the pieces that I needed. Once the glue was dry on the leg pieces, I cleaned up the edges just a little on the table saw to remove any glue squeeze out and to make sure that the joints were flush. Then I trimmed them to length and started gluing up the sides. Once all the glue was dry on the side panels and the frames, I attached the legs on each side of the side panels using wood glue and dowels. Obviously, you can use whatever type of joinery you prefer for this. That's the beauty of building it yourself. Once the glue was dry on the side assemblies, I used dowels and wood glue again to attach the horizontal frame pieces between the sides. That created the entire vanity, kind of like this vanity skeleton, if you will. Once the entire frame was assembled and the glue was dry, now things start coming together and looking like something. I don't use plans when I'm building furniture. Usually I draw them up after the fact just to share with you all. But sometimes I'm reminded why I should probably do all the math ahead of time because this is my thought process when I'm calculating things in the shop. That'll work. 14 and a quarter. 14 and then I'll have to three quarter. Yeah. Okay, so 14. 14. 14. 14. <laughs> anyway, once I got that worked out, I started installing the bottom and the dividers. Because hardwood is pretty expensive, I built the inside of this piece using plywood to save a few bucks and to save some time from having to glue up a bunch more panels. So I cut a piece of plywood to install for the middle cabinet section and used pocket holes and screws to attach it in place. I only need a bottom in the middle because the side sections are for drawer boxes, but the middle will actually be a cabinet. Once the bottom was in place, I cut two more pieces to install as section dividers, but I had to notch out a corner in the back for them to fit around the vanity frame. So I just marked where to cut and I used a jigsaw to trim that corner off. To keep this video from being like an hour long, I've got all the dimensions and details on this entire build and all of the pieces used linked in the plans below. I installed these divider panels with one and a quarter inch wood screws, just like shown. The key here was making sure to install these so that they were square and evenly spaced so that I didn't run into issues installing the drawers later. Now, this is where the trim that I was talking about at the beginning of the video comes in. My whole design was built around this trim. I usually buy my trim and molding pieces, but since this was white oak, I couldn't find any trim to buy that would match. It's mostly just pine around here, so I had to make it myself. I wanted it to look like a piece of solid wood on the outside and then 
like cove molding on the inside. So first, I ripped down some one and a half inch strips to use for this trim. I adjusted the table saw blade to about three quarter inches high and adjusted the rip fence so that only about a blade width would be trimmed off the edge of the piece. Then I ran these pieces through the table saw to give them a little rabbit like shown here. Next, I installed a half inch cove bit into my router and routed along the side that I just cut. I had to route a little depth at a time because I tried to take it all out at once and the oak just kept splitting on me. So I did a few test pieces until I kind of got it about the depth that I wanted. I cut enough trim to line the inside of the front of both vanities and then I sanded these pieces by hand and started cutting them to install. I adjusted my miter saw to 45 degrees and cut to fit these pieces around the inside of the vanity and once I had all the pieces cut and checked that they fit well, I glued and clamped them in place. I inset the trim pieces about a quarter of an inch from the front of the frame just for a little extra depth. I admired it for just a moment, but I had to get back to work because at this point it's still only halfway done. For the drawer and door fronts, I wanted a continuous grain pattern. So I measured the opening of the vanity inside the frame and sorted through my boards to find the pieces that I wanted to use for the fronts. I glued up a panel the size of the opening using these boards. I'll cut this panel down to use as the door and drawer fronts so that once it's finished, the front of the vanity will look like one continuous grain panel. After the glue had dried, I trimmed the edges clean and square using my Craig AccuCut and then I trimmed three equal sized pieces to use as the door fronts and the door. Thankfully, they did fit. So I removed two outside pieces and then cut them in half to make the four drawer fronts. Because I wanted to make sure to keep these in that continuous grain pattern, I would carefully labeled each piece so that I can keep up with which one goes where. For this vanity design, I didn't wanna add drawer pull hardware. I wanted to use notches instead. So I traced out on one of the drawer fronts where I wanted to cut the notch. I'm like horrible with a jigsaw. Well, I guess I'm not really that bad, I'm just really impatient. So I built a little template using some scrap plywood. This allowed me to use the jigsaw to rough cut the notch and then clamp it to this template and use a flush cut bit with my router to get a clean straight edge. So now the drawer fronts are cut, but I also had to do something with the door. I wanted it to look like drawers here, even though it's not. So I cut a little dado along the middle to look like a gap between the drawers. Then I used a jigsaw to rough cut and a flesh bit again to clean it up, just like I did with the drawer fronts. Now in a later step, I'll be adding a piece of wood behind these notches. So to give it a little place to grip to open it, I used a chamfer bit as well to chamfer the back side of the notch. Stay tuned, it'll make more sense in a little bit. And now it's time to add the drawers and get this piece finished up. Because the trim doesn't allow me to mount the drawer slide directly onto the side panels, I had to add some spacer blocks on the side to mount the slides too. So for this, I just cut some scrap plywood pieces and glued and screwed them in place like shown. I ripped some strips of plywood and cut them to length on the miter saw. I've actually got a super detailed guide for how to build and install drawer boxes that I will link below and up here in the corner for details. Added a dado in the drawer boxes to install quarter inch drawer bottoms and assembled the drawer boxes using pocket holes and screws. I attached some edge banding along the tops of the plywood pieces before assembling because I just think that they look nicer if they're edge banded, but that's totally personal preference. You can skip that if you want. 
I had ordered my drawer slides, but they weren't here yet. So at this point, I went ahead and installed the door onto the cabinet. I used overlay hinges for this door since it sits on the front of the divider panels and that's where we were mounting the hinges to. Finally, the slides came in and I could get these doors in place. So I attached the slides to the vanity and then installed the door boxes onto the slides. Also note that when I added the top drawers here, I had to leave a pretty large space in between the bottom and the top drawers and you'll see why in a minute. Lastly, I needed to add the fronts. So I flipped the vanity on its back and laid out my door box fronts to get the spacing correct. Then I screwed them on from the inside of the drawer boxes. I didn't really like the big holes from the notches, so I cut some scrap pieces and glued them in place on the back side to cover the holes. If I had a nice bandsaw, I would have liked to resaw these pieces really thin, but I don't have a nice bandsaw, so I just glued the whole 3 quarter inch piece on the back side. It is what it is. <laughs> the final step is to add the top. So I glued up another panel to use as the top. Once the glue was dry, I used my AccuCut and my circular saw to trim the ends clean and flush so it was ready for sanding and finish. There are a ton of ways to install the top here and I recommend using a figure eight tabs or some other type of hardware to allow for wood movement. However, I'm not installing this top until I have it in place in the bathroom so I can see if or how I need to trim it down to fit after it's shimmed up and screwed to the wall. So for now, I'm just sitting it on top. I gave everything a final sanding and finished it with Minwax Helmsman Poly. I've used this on my wooden kitchen countertops and wooden bathroom countertop as well and it's held up really well. So I used it here too. But feel free to finish however you wish. I didn't add a back since I'll be installing plumbing in the middle section and the outside sections are just drawer boxes. However, if I plan to use it as a drawer or a console, I probably would have put a quarter inch plywood backer on. I really love how this trim detail looks on this piece and while it did add a little extra work with having to make it and then having to add the drawer spacer blocks because it took up some space on the front, I think it was definitely worth it. This build was a little more involved than some of my other recent projects, so I've detailed everything in the blog post linked below if it wasn't covered in detail in this video. I hope you've enjoyed this project and if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on what's coming next. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy building.